Welcome back uh, to the summit. Uh, still with us, uh, defense and government analyst Amir Oren, uh, director of the Russia program at the Foundation for Defense of uh, Democracies, uh, John Hardy, and joining us, international security analyst Martin Himmel. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, so very much for staying with us, for joining us. We're also uh, staying on topic, of course, but before we get back to our conversation, um, what uh, was a tough decision uh, for the U.S. It appears to be a no-brainer for the U.K. in terms that uh, it shouldn't have happened, um, uh, perhaps putting it um, in a more British way. Um, uh, here's what uh, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak had to say, and we will pick up the conversation from there. Well, the UK is signatory to a convention which prohibits the production or use of cluster munitions and discourages their use. We will continue to do our part to support Ukraine against Russia's illegal and unprovoked invasion. We've done that by providing heavy battle tanks and most recently long-range weapons, you know, and hopefully all countries can continue to support Ukraine. Okay, gentlemen, let's get to it. Is the Western Alliance um, fracturing? Um, another quick fire round, 30 seconds each to let your initial stance, and now we pick up the conversation now from there. Amir Oren, please take the lead. It's a classic uh, line by the British Prime Minister, uh, the uh, old upstairs downstairs hmm. uh, dichotomy, where other people uh, should do our dirty work for us. Okay, short and sweet. Um, uh, John Hardy, your thoughts? Well, I'd agree. I think there's been some maybe disagreement is the right word over this issue, but it's not something that's so serious as to break up the impressive uh, transatlantic unity with which we, we've responded to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Martin Hamill, your thoughts? Well, I think it's the opposite of fracture. I think it's actually strengthening. The cluster bomb issue is not a, a make it or break it issue by no means. Uh, just look at since the Russian invasion, Finland has joined NATO. Sweden wants to join NATO. Yes, there's some problems with Turkey over it, but they'll be overcome. Uh, NATO is stronger and uh, bigger than it was before, and it's spending more money in, in defending itself now. So I think NATO is actually strengthening, not weakening. Okay, and before we get uh, um, uh, further into uh, NATO, um, uh, and let's feel free to interact from this point onwards, of course, Martin Hemmel, criticism not just by uh, um, America's uh, Western uh, allies, uh, the UK, uh, Canada, etc., um, also in D.C. as well, some Democrats really not on board here. Did Biden shoot himself in the foot here, politically, domestically speaking? I really don't think so. Uh, yes, some of his uh, more progressive uh, portions of his uh, party will come out against this, but uh, I think the Rep I think Republicans will be for it. Uh, I think that uh, his own center part will be for it. I don't think he, sh he stepped or shot himself in the foot by no means. I think that uh, uh, it it's just another step in trying to strengthen the Ukraine. Some people find it repugnant. Some people can't go along with it. But on the, on the bottom line is the Ukraine will probably get these weapons. Amir Oren. Well, uh, the the alliance, uh, which is led by the, uh, the United States, and the United States supplies uh, approximately half of uh, all the funds for it, the alliance has always been a uh, dual uh, purpose, uh, political and military. And the political nature was in order for the military to deter attack, and should deterrence fail, to show that it is able hmm. to fend off uh, the attack. And uh, we are now in a crucial period in the war where if uh, people are too delicate about the means used in order to block the uh, Soviet war on Ukraine, the war uh, may fail. And the consequences will be much more fatal than if uh, cluster bombs are used. And, and uh, let's circle back uh, um, to NATO, of course, the summit in Lithuania about uh, uh, to begin. And Biden, amidst uh, the uh, against the backdrop of uh, the cluster bombs uh, criticism, uh, is also suggesting uh, the alliance is not ready for a Ukrainian accession uh, quite uh, uh, yet. John Ardy, well, when um, or, or what will be enough? Well, I think the debate right now isn't really so much whether Ukraine should join NATO during the war, while the war is still going. Even Zelensky has, has admitted that that's just you know impossible. Um, the debate really is whether we should give Ukraine some sort of ironclad uh, roadmap 
that would uh, uh, sort of lay out the path, what they have to do and, and when uh, Ukraine will join NATO. Uh, the United States has really been resistant to, to that idea. In fact, we're really standing uh, quite alone, but, but um, most NATO allies have been supportive of Ukraine of Ukraine's requests in that regard. So, you know, we've pushed back uh, pushed back for various reasons. I think the place we'll settle is um, just you know reaffirming the 2008 Bucharest uh, declaration that Ukraine will eventually join NATO, and then you know some sort of commitment for for continued long term uh, security aid to Ukraine. Martin Hemmel. I think that um, uh, this will not cause any sort of a major problem for Ukraine. Uh, uh, with the backing of uh, NATO, I think it will stay strong. I don't think that they need these weapons in order to continue. And, uh, you know, they, they can't break through minefields. They can't break through uh, uh, these big defenses without real significant firepower. War is not a friendly sport. And uh, I think that there will be no serious backlash on this move. So, Amir Oren, what are we waiting for at this point in time? What could be a battlefield or a diplomatic game changer? Ukraine um, will always be a buffer state between uh, NATO and uh, Russia. Now, Finland, now that uh, it has joined, is, of course, bordering uh, Russia, uh, not too far from St. Petersburg. But um, uh, once you get uh, into definitions, uh, what do you mean by Ukraine? Does it include Crimea? Mm. What will happen to eastern Ukraine, to the Donbass? Uh, it is impossible right now to sort it out. And eventually, there will be some uh, modus vivendi between Russia, Ukraine and NATO, but not right now. So, so John Hardy, to that point, um, is Ukraine's end the same as the West's end of the war? Well, I think the uh, Kyiv's uh, ideas about how this war could end are starting to crystallize. Uh, there was a report last week that, that basically the idea is you know, complete a successful counteroffensive put Crimea at risk, and then the hope is that would force Putin to negotiate in good faith. Um, you know, obviously, that requires a successful counteroffensive in the first place, and then who knows whether that leverage would be enough to convince Putin to, to end the war. Um, that seems to me like the, the most plausible um, uh, way to truly stop the fighting. But unfortunately, I, I would predict that we'll see some sort of follow-on war if, if and when we do get an actual uh, ceasefire. Martin. I actually think that uh, I'm pretty pessimistic about when it comes to the end. I think we're heading for a, a, a basically at some point uh, a long war of attrition because uh, Putin just cannot lose in quotation marks. He can't uh, concede defeat. Uh, otherwise, he's conceding the end of his authority and maybe his life as well, depending on the situation. Uh, and uh, I think that he will fight quite seriously and go beyond many borders that we don't want to consider if he starts to really lose badly in Ukraine. I think where we're heading to is a war of attrition. And when Vladimir Putin exits office, this is one way or the other, that's when we'll probably see an end to this war. Amir Oren, wrap it up for us. Uh, is the cluster bomb um, debate just on the sidelines, yet another sideline topic during this long drawn war? Yes, the uh, cluster bomb issue is uh, marginal. Uh, it is not uh, decisive. The uh, lines uh, on the ground will probably be frozen once uh, this uh, uh, counter-offensive peters out. And the question of finding a formula um, by uh, diplomats will probably uh, be on the table before the next uh, presidential uh, election season is upon us at the turn of the year. Timing is everything, isn't it? Uh, John Hardy, Martin Emmel, Amir Oren, thank you so very much, gentlemen, for your time, for your insight, for uh, your companionship. Thank you very much uh, for this. We are taking our final two-minute break. Can you believe it? But we'll be back with so much more. We'll take you live to Jerusalem, to the political drama there, and also the political drama in the Netherlands. Yes, yes, do not go anywhere. We'll be back in a few.